Welcome back, everyone. Major Jim Baker is with us today from the Lima Police Department. We're talking a little bit about their staffing levels, where they'd like to be, where they're at now. Thanks for being with us. We wanted to talk about that level. I know you've been authorized, I guess, by the city to, as far as the funding for five more. Give us a sense where you are now as far as strength level and, and where you'd like to get up to. Yeah, sure thing. Good morning. Uh, we right now are at 74 sworn officers. And with the additional five that they said that we could hire, that would take us to 84. So we are currently looking at a deficit of 10 right now. It's such tough times, I know, to uh, across all areas of hiring to, to get folks. Do you eventually want to get higher than that? Is that kind of a, a dream that's always been in the mirror to, to, to get to that level that you're authorized for? Yes, yes, it would be very good. There's a lot of programs that we have not been able to do, and we would love to get back to that. I mean, especially our, our community audience and policing program. Yeah, and I know even a couple of years ago, you guys had, it, the hope was to bring that back, and it shortly came back, as, as, as you said, staffing levels kind of dropped a little bit. Tell me a little bit about the importance of that program and, and how getting out in the community makes such a big difference. It really helps. It, it gives people an ease um, of, of reporting crime, of just talking to officers and hanging out with them. Um, it spreads us out through the city. Uh, it makes it a place where a person could walk in um, a lot of times, you know, they necessarily wouldn't want to come to the police department, but walking into one of our substations uh, sets them at ease. It gives us an opportunity to see how things are going, um, share information. So we're really looking forward to get that up and running again. For, for those who are out there may be interested in joining the police department, give us a sense of the steps they have to take, what, what they'll go through to get there. Well. And that is one of the issues that we run up against uh, a lot of times, and especially the way hiring is going right now, you can pretty much show up and say, hi, how are you doing? Uh, can I have a job? <laughs> and that, you know, that's kind of the way things are going right now. But with us, the process is extensive and it takes, it takes a quite a bit amount of time because of um, what we're asking people to do in this job. It's important that our community trusts the people that we hire because uh, they're out in the community, they're in residents' homes, uh, you know, they are given a firearm. So it, it just, it extends the process. But for us, it all begins with taking a civil service test. And that's the first step in the process. The the other thing I, I know, I, I've talked with the chief before about what kind of person makes a good uh, police officer and that kind of thing. Is there a set, set of qualities you look for? Maybe something that someone that's interested Here's, here's some things you're going to have to have as far as your character to be able to do this job. Yeah, there are certain things. And also by statute, there's some things that uh, would preclude people. Uh, again, it really goes back to a person of integrity, a person of honesty. Um, unfortunately, if a person has a felony in their background, this we're not able to use them. Uh, the other aspect to that is it's a, a physical, very physical job. So there's a physical agility, uh, fitness requirement that would be a part of that. Um, but if you have that desire to serve, we can pretty much use you. That's great. One of the things I forgot to mention is we, we think about the resource officers through Lima City Schools, but they pay for those, don't they? So that doesn't really count against your numbers? No, it, it, it enhances our numbers. And matter of fact, it's really helped us. Uh, we have somewhat of a unique program where these officers are sworn auxiliary officers with the police department, but their salaries are paid through the city schools. Uh, since we have been uh, able to utilize them, uh, especially for our day shift hours, the calls for service has gone way down and the information sharing has gone way up. Yeah, it's a great program for, for those, uh, as you mentioned, who might have an interest and they want to start thinking about the civil service test and, and joining you guys and going through that. What's what's the first thing to do? Maybe go online? Yep. Yep. Go online. Uh, we are, are trying to hit all those uh, platforms that people use today with <laughs> social media, Facebook and all that stuff. Um, we will be giving another civil service test here in the near future. And so be watching for that. Um, really, there's not a whole lot to study for that. It's just a basic uh, information entry to get the whole process started. After your civil service test, uh, a background investigation is done, um, and it's a very extensive background. We talk to your neighbors, your previous employers. We, we talk to everybody. And then after that, um, you also have a physical agility test because of the requirements. 
and then um, an interview, uh, a lie detector test, uh, a medical exam. So again, it's an extensive process, but we want the citizens of Lima to know that the people that are out there working for them are trustworthy. As you mentioned, a very rewarding career as well. Major, thank you so much for telling us about it. We appreciate it. Sure thing. You bet. Nice chatting with you. We'll be back after this.